All right, this is Learn the Burner. I'm Garrett. And this is Neville. And we're doing The Mandalorian Season 2, Chapter 16, The Rescue. Wah, wah, wah. The final episode of Season 2. Yes, and we're watching it the day after the premiere. <laughs> yes, this is 1972. Just kidding. We're in a stupid fucking pussy in the year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh you've seen this right yes sir I've also seen it okay the lambda class shuttle weaves through space evading heavy lasers fire from slave one on board the shuttle dr pershing asked the pilots about what was happening and who they were being pursued by but the shuttle co-pilot tells him to shut his mouth as this isn't his laboratory okay uh, so Dr. Pershing looks like Elijah Wood. Yeah, and Elijah Wood or something. Yeah. Frodo Woods. Indeed. <clears throat> On board Slave One, Boba Fett targets the shuttle's engines and fires an ion cannon, disabling the avionics and comms. Fett orders the shuttle to deactivate and shields and oh, deactivate its shields and transponders. Um and prepare for boarding. Dr. Pershing suggests they fight the pirates but the co-pilot refuses saying he doesn't have a death wish okay so right off the bat we know what's happening because we already know Boba Fett is in that one and who was in the other ones oh the uh, Mandalorian no the the girl Mandalorian um what's her name Bo-Katan Bo Bo and Joe yeah. and Mo Bo -Katan. <laughs> the other you know the other woman too can't forget yeah. Bo-Katan and others Yes, and company, of course. <laughs> Slave One docks with the shuttle, and the Mandalorian Mando enters the cockpit. The co-pilot stands and tells Mando that before he makes a mistake, he should know that the passenger is Dr. Pershing. Mando says that they've met, then addressing Pershing, Pershing asks if Grogu is still alive. Pershing confirms he is, and is on board Gideon's light cruiser. The co-pilot grabs Pershing, holding a blaster to his head. Cara Dune enters the cockpit. Blasters are raised. The pilot tries to bargain for his freedom, saying he's not with the co-pilot, and they can work something out. Is that the same guy who's like, I don't have a death wish? Uh, okay, so the co-pilot... No, no, no. The pilot tries to, uh... Tries to bargain for his freedom, and... No, the co-pilot says he doesn't have a death wish, so it's the other guy. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, this guy's all wishy-washy. He's like, oh, we'll just surrender. And then he doesn't surrender. <laughs> yeah, he does the opposite of that. The complete op He does what the, the script tells him to do, basically. So the co-pilot shoots the pilot, then explains to Dune and Mando that Pershing is a top-tier New Republic target, a clone engineer. And if he dies because of them, Dune will wish he never left Alderaan. So There we go. Dropping Alderaan again. This is interesting. So Pershing is a clone scientist. When exactly did Attack of the Clones happen? And according to Mandalorian? Uh, 25 years or more before. Wait, so the Clone Wars happened before Mandalorian? Yes. Okay. So That's, they why, are... was... That's why Bo is giving shade to Boba Fett. They're like, I've heard your voice a thousand times. You know? Oh, because he was a clone. That's right. Well, yeah. She calls Jango Fett his donor. Well, he's like, he's my papa. Huh. But yeah, what do you think about the the takedown of the Lambda shuttle? Well, it's pretty good. So, uh, dude mockingly asks, which one? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I missed the sentence. He's saying he recognizes her tear tattoo, then goads at her, saying he saw the destruction of her planet aboard the Death Star. Dude mockingly asks, which one? And he angrily tells her that millions died on those bases and that the destruction of Alderaan was a small price to pay to rid the galaxy of terrorism. Have Alderaan enough... again. Well, Alderaan is the big city with the flying cars everywhere, right? No. Okay. That's Coruscant. Is Alderaan the place that we've never seen? It's the... You saw it out the view window of the first Death Star after it killed his first planet. It's basically the first planet destroyed by the Empire. Okay, but we've never... It's the 9-11 like... of Star Wars, you know? Ah, okay, okay. 
where were you? Where were you? Never forget America, you know? Yeah, I get you. Okay. <laughs> Even though you weren't in America, you were like, oh my God, the news is just all about America this, America that, America this, America that. Oh, now they're going to war. Oh my. Yeah, so <laughs> it's basically that. Okay. It was ahead of its time. Huh. Wait. So, wait, we have never have you ever seen, seen Star like... Wars and 9 11 in the same room at the same time? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. We just solved it. <laughs> we just solved 9 11. <laughs> we just solved 9 11. George Lucas did 9 11. Wow. For 50, 50, 40 years before. Math. Wow. This is mind boggling. <laughs> it's like my mind is in a bottle or something. <laughs> Boggle. Like the bottling. Game. Bottling. Yeah, I got you. All right. Haven't had enough. Dune shoots the co pilot in the face. Murder. Nearly missing Pershing, who screams and clutches his ear. Manda watches as Dune turns and walks out. So this this face tattoo that she's got that apparently is like I didn't see this face tattoo for the first season at all. Like I thought she had a mole. She has a mole in real life. I'm pretty sure they like put some flesh on her mole to make it look like a tattoo. Yeah, wait, I thought it was a mole too. She has she straight has like a a Monroe, you know? (laughs) And they're like, No, it's a teardrop tattoo, you know? Like Really? Dead ass. That like does a, not look like a teardrop. It's a, it's it's actually a rebel insignia. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Is, is in fact a rebel insignia that they have crafted out of her actual existing mole. I'm sure. Let's see here. She's huh. she good looking dog. Look at those red carpet pictures of her. Oh my god, she good looking. The Mandalorian. Her name is something. Gina. Gina. Carino. C. Yeah, I've definitely I've definitely looked her up a few times. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Slave one arrives at a planet dotted with large refineries and lands along a number of park starships, including a gauntlet fighter. What is a gauntlet fighter? It's a weird looking ship. All right. Uh let me oh, no. I'm sorry. A gauntlet. What does it look like? I don't know. It's got wings. Oh, <laughs> you telling me this? What is a wing airplane doing in space? What are you in a? Well, I real see... rockets have wings. I see it. What the fuck is this? I didn't see this. When did this happen? It's just it's sitting there when they park their ships. Oh, it's got its wings pointed up. I thought that was like a tower or some crap. Oh, it's one of those where the wings fold upwards. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was like a, uh... a building in itself. <laughs> Classic, classic yeah. fold them up majigger. I've seen that before. Nothing new, nothing new. In a nearby cantina, a hush falls as Mando and Boba Fett enter um, and cross the room to approach Bo Katan and Koska Reeves. So the girl has a name, Koska Reeves. <laughs> They're missing a Mando. Oh, yeah, wasn't there three? No, there was two in the cantina. Yeah, but there was three during that, like, there mission. Was three. Wasn't there a guy yeah, or something, true. or is it just, like, the girl squad? No, I'm pretty sure it was one guy. Yeah. <laughs> and he, they're like, shut up. Don't say one <laughs> word. We don't pay <laughs> you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I put the mask on. <laughs> Keep it on. Don't you be flipping your hair like us. <laughs> like, <laughs> getting catty up in there, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, Mando tells cries he needs their help. And she replies that not all Mandalorians are bounty hunters and that some of them serve a higher purpose. Mando tells her that the Moff Gideon that that Moff Gideon has taken the child and she says they'll never find him. Fett tells Mando they don't need these two and they get out of there. Cries says to Fett that he is not a Mandalorian, to which he responds he never said he was. Oh. Fett and Reeves begin to argue. But cries tells them to save it for the imps. Womp, womp, womp. So she's calling so Boba, Boba like, Fett out. Yeah, and he's like, I never even said that. And she's like, save for the imps. So is there imps in Star Wars? How would you spell Imperial with an E or an I? Because <laughs> oh. I would, me personally, would spell okay, it the correct so... way. Whatever, whatever the correct way to spell it is. Whatever my phone tells me. Yeah. I, I'm definitely searching. Empire. With an H. Imps. Ah, wait. Okay, well, it makes <laughs> sense that they're gonna. They're, yeah, they call it the Imps. Okay, the Empire. <laughs> that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. All right. Manda tells them they have 
they have Gideon coordinates, and he is a light cruiser. They could help her regain Mandalore. Moff scoffs, or sorry, Fett scoffs. <laughs> Fett scoffs, saying the Empire had reduced Mandalore to glass, and Bo Katan retorts that he is a disgrace to the armor. Fett says the armor belonged to his father, but cries mocks him, saying, Don't you mean your donor? Oh, yeah. Oh, because he was the clone. Basically, because he's technically a clone, right? Oh, well, yeah. But he's supposed to be a good one. He's supposed to be a, right. a, a higher quality clone, but you know, who knows? She says he's a clone and she's heard his voice a thousand times before. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I didn't catch that part. Because she's a. Uh... She's in the Clone Wars cartoon, so that means they met Ahsoka, and did Ahsoka didn't send them. She did. Wait, did she? Did it, Ahsoka happened yeah. after they met? Right. It was like no, the Frog was, Ladies, like accidentally sent her, sent them to the, the Mandos, right? No, it was one way or the other, but them two were connected. <laughs> um, sure Ahsoka sent. Grogu to the Tython just for the Seeing Stone or whatever. A Bo Katan sent. Mando to Ahsoka. Oh, uh, that's right. She's like, I know a Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me, me no Jedi. <laughs> okay, so she did know them. That's cool. I, I forgot. It's been a while. In a minute. <clears throat> uh, she says, uh, oh. Reeves leaps up, swinging at him, and a pair fight before Bo Katan orders them to stop. Dog, this she was agrees. awesome. What? I loved this part. Them fighting right there? Yes. You don't remember where they were like fucking like acting like they're, they're like in grappling. like a Yeah, exactly. They were like in like a it's like Street Fighter or something. They were like using their jetpacks to do flips and shit. Oh yeah. That was pretty <laughs> cool. I forgot about that. They were they were using like all the weapons. We were like, say it for the imps, I said. <laughs> but he has a clone. Look at him. Just look, look at it like fucking like yeah. continually egging it on. I'm like this. Lady, <laughs> didn't she just say save for the imps? Hello, yeah, and then they're like, Nope, yeah, kick his ass, kick his, kick his half ass, Mando head ass. <laughs> I'm like, Okay, all right, well, it's not really what you just said, yeah. She's like, Quit fine, punch him, quit fine, <laughs> aim at the nuts, yeah, <laughs> <Aim at> the <laughs> nuts. <laughs> okay, she helps. Or she agrees to help them if she can have Gideon's dark saber, which she will use to retake Mandalore and ask Mando to reconsider joining their efforts. That's how she doesn't say anything about the dark saber. She's just like, yeah, as long as I get that, like no rules, nothing. Yeah, that was a surprise to me. The whole rule thing. Well, it's yeah, <laughs> it's clearly a tribal situation. But like you think she would have like given them a heads up and like they wouldn't have been like, you know taken over by it or like one upped should i say hey, well, how did i'm surprised that the mandalorian didn't think about that he doesn't he know anything know. about it he doesn't know anything about mandos he literally he was seems... like adopted by some weirdos oh that's, he that's... very strongly believes he shouldn't take your mask off <laughs> yeah that's what oh that's what bo was saying she's like what the fuck not even to eat you do you shower with your mask on what if someone's you know yeah how are you gonna clean your face exactly what if you're swimming you're gonna just <laughs> swim with your own on come on <laughs> man interesting but. uh on slave one bo katan briefs the others on gideon's cruiser saying that at the height of the empire such a ship would have carried hundreds of troopers but now only holds a fraction of that pershing speaks up saying that is misleading, as Gideon also has a platoon of dark troopers aboard his vessel. Mando asks how many troopers and housed in how, how many troopers are housed in the suits, but Pershing tells him that this is an all-droid third-generation model. He tells them where the dark troopers are housed in a cargo bay next to the brig where Grogu is being held. I thought that was obvious that they are robots. Yeah. Well, apparently there were second or first generations that were Iron Man suits that might be notorious. If you play any of the video games, you see that like they are people, you know? Oh. But just for the fact that in the first episode, Mando said, like, I don't do robots, you know? Yeah. But then because, he does like robots. But his family got like destroyed by super battle droids. Hmm. So and that's basically what these things are. Yeah. They're the they're basically his arch enemy. 
Uh, yeah, like tailor made for Mando to be like, oh, let's get out of here, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Scooby Doo and ghosts, yeah. <laughs> jinkies, <Yeah. laughs> but, but straight up, this is a in every medium, they start off in robots and then they end up being Iron Man suits. And that's, I commend them for not going that way. That's pretty cool. Oh, you like the robot thing? Yeah, like, you know, throw us for a loop. You know, everybody was expecting one thing. And then like, literally, literally, this entire episode is like, just like loop throwing 101. You know, like all of our theories were, you know, you could guess what the end was, but no one ever expected it. <laughs> you know, this is like, this is a great, great episode for throwing people for loops. That's for yeah. Sure. The thing I thought was most surprising was how little fighting the Mandalorian had with the Dark Troopers. Dude, they would have crushed him. You saw that. They were literally like unstoppable Terminators. You yeah. know? Like they, they were they locked him in an airlock and just. just like I think I mentioned earlier, space. earlier in this like season. Wait, no, it was season one. Like this show does Terminators right. You know, like it does killer robots better than I've ever seen in any medium. You know, that's true. They are actually dangerous. They are. They are beyond overpowered. You're just like, oh, oh, you know, like waiting for them to die. Like, who are they going to kill off? You know, <laughs> like this is one of those like ultimate powers. Like, you don't want to fuck with a, a roided up robot. A you know? roided up robot. <laughs> yes. But they are. They are like murder bot. That is the best robot. The most dangerous robot I think I've ever seen ever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, besides like fucking like Pacific Rim or something, you know, like skyscraper uh, robots. <laughs> besides those, I mean, yeah, just because those are big, you know, drop that. If we're, yeah, if we're doing a top 10 or a you know, what robot beats what, like it's gonna be Dark Troopers and Pacific Rim, but <laughs> it'll be a very short episode. But hmm. yeah, but yeah, we got we got killer robots at its finest peak performance. Yeah. All right. Bo Katan outlines her plan and they send a distress call to the shuttle. Bo Katan outlines her plan. They'll send a distress call from the shuttle and emergency land into the cruiser's launch tube, blocking any potential inceptors. Cries, Reeves, and Finnick. Shan will then attack the bridge, misdirecting Gideon's forces from Mandalorian, who will head uh, for the brig to rescue Grogu. I never As understood this. Like they're playing? Yeah, I'm like, okay, so what? They, they, the fighters launch out of a, a tube. All right, I guess that's not so weird. It's kind of like Battlestar Galactica. But didn't they land in the tube with the, the shuttle? And what? <laughs> what happened to all those fighters? They just disappear? Oh, like, all those pilots? Okay. Well, if the, didn't he <laughs> launch the fighters? So he launches them. He launched like a pair of fighters. And then Boba Fett like scrammed off, right? And then they, uh, oh fuck, you're right. The fighters are stuck outside. Oh man. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I thought they were like in the middle of launching more fighters. And then I was like, wait, why aren't they just getting out of their ship and attacking them? Like, what? Well, they just shoot, <laughs> shoot forward and blow the shuttle up. Yeah. You know, if they're in the damn tube already. Just, just kill that damn thing. Okay. All right. So already there's two fronts where they're they're attacking two objectives two obvious objectives even to the enemy yeah which it gets taken advantage of clearly okay okay um okay but katan says that gideon is hers but dune says she needs him alive and his isb knowledge will be invaluable to the new republic cry says he doesn't care as long as gideon surrenders to her okay so basically oh right there Christ says as long as Gideon surrenders to her. So that's like she knows about the sword thing. Uh, but is this on the ship or are they already split off and they run down the hallways? This is on the ship. Or no. Shit. No, this is when they land. So Mando's not standing there. No. They already broke off. They're like, as long as Gideon's where we need to be, that's all that matters. I'm like, oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the old misdirect, you know, they're like, this is what we're going to do. I mean, they pretty cool. much did it, I think, right? Yeah, well, they captured the bridge, but they were, like, expecting the captain of the ship to be at the bridge. Hmm. You know? Yeah. But... All right, boarding. Both starships drop out of hyperspace near Gideon's cruiser. Slave 1 begins firing on the shuttle. 
Bogotan issues a distress call requesting emergency docking. Okay, so it's like they're faking it. They're like, someone's shooting me. Let me in. Yeah, Boba Fett's using his famous ship to cause a bunch of shenanigans. Yes. The comms officer acknowledges the request and tells them to stay clear of the cruiser's launch tube while she launches or while she launches a TIE fighter squadron. Two TIEs launch launch from the cruiser, but the shuttle continues towards the bay, saying they are under attack and must dock immediately. The hangar control officer aborts the launch procedure as the incoming shuttle enters the launch tube and crashes into the bay. Fett destroys the two TIEs, pursuing him, and jumps into hyperspace. Why did why did he leave? Yeah, that's what I was confused about. He just kind of gets up on out of there, like. I would Yeah, I guess he's trying to keep that ship good looking for them to capture. That would have been. Like, I would have been swirling that thing like <laughs> Tim. Yeah, he should have been shooting from the outside and like doing some more damage. That's like um, you ever seen the movie Gone in sixty seconds? Yes. When he's like steals Lucille, his dream car, and then he like wrecks the fuck out of. Kind of like that. You don't want to. So you don't want to wreck Lucille. I, I saw that movie one time when I was a kid, and I don't really remember it besides the cover. It has Nicolas Cage on it and Lucille. Yeah, and <laughs> the uh, car. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the famous fastback Mustang. Huh. So you don't yeah. you don't want to you don't want to wreck your fastback in the middle of the heist, you know? Oh, I get you now. Okay, okay. That's that's kind of what I'm saying. All right, on the bridge. Gideon listens to, listens to the screams of the troopers and officers on the docking bay as they are shot down by the attackers and orders the dark troopers to be powered up. With the bay clear, Mando exits the shuttle and makes his way towards the the uh, the brig, avoiding stormtroopers along the way. Dune, Shand, Cries, and Reeves fight their way through the cargo bay, but Dune's gun jams, forcing her to use it as a club. They nah. enter a turbo lift to the bridge. This is a common theme, dude. She's like, she drops the end bomb and then she hits her gun. Like, yeah, like I don't. She's always like a melee fighter. Yeah, she might as well just get some brass knuckles. Just get it over with. You know? Yeah, like I won't, why don't they just give her brass knuckles and say you're a melee fighter? Do it. No, Instead because she's like, got a she's got to be a shock trooper, which is a I don't know. She's not a Jedi, so she can't melee combat because everybody has lasers. That's just thing. And then they tried to do that in The Last Jedi where they had a guy with a club into it. That's it. I don't think he had a riot shield or anything. He just had like a club or something. Wait, he was like a club trooper? Yeah. Like a riot trooper, but they were like assaulting a building that where they're exploding. <laughs> like no reason for it him to be there. Sounds it would be the worst job to be a shield trooper in a world of laser weapons. Honest honestly, I think it was so bad that I think he had a weapon and threw it down and then pulled out a club <laughs> to fight Finn oh, with no. a lightsaber. So it was like, it was to be able to see a lightsaber. That's why they introduced a melee weapon. Wow. A stormtrooper hit a lightsaber. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing. This yeah, is revolutionary. That goes in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, like a stormtrooper deflected anything. No. <laughs> Oh, speaking of which, I watched the first episode of Twin Peaks. Would you, dude? The first episode is good. Yeah. Okay. There's a little too much crying at the beginning. Oh yeah, dude. Like there, that that shows the that's that's the era. That's the nineties when they're <laughs> you know like they're like Oscars yeah. all around. You know, <laughs> they were they're trying. I feel like it, it, it was like thirty minutes. The first thirty minutes was just everybody crying. And I feel like it was a bit much, but I mean, it was setting the stage for like yeah, the like, whole. Does it show you know. how the family and the town are all like close knit? <clears throat> yeah, like uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's super nineties. You can tell, you know, it's so nineties. It's very, it's like late eighties, but like hick nineties. Like there's a roadhouse. I don't think you've gotten to the roadhouse part yet. Yeah, yeah. There's a roadhouse. They're in there country dancing. There is a fucking roadhouse, and they. <laughs> okay, so they here's here's my Twin Peaks prediction. Oh. Uh, so the first off, the the solution is going to be extremely convoluted. Of course, it's going to be like aliens or some fucking insane thing. Honestly, okay, I'll tell you my theory. But okay, well, okay. So what I got so far is it's going to be multiple people in a conspiracy. 
the one person I think is in on it is that one girl that's sitting on her bed and she's like talking about a book or flowers or something. And she has like curly hair. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's been a long time since I watched the first episode. I'm sorry. I thought it was like a few days ago. <laughs> I watched the first episode a long time ago. And uh, then I watched the second episode recently. Oh. So the curly hair girl, I think that's her sister. I'm sorry. I think I rewatched it. Um, I'm looking it up. She was when sitting she... on a bed and she was talking about something cryptic ish. And it was like, yeah, it was that girl. If it's, is it the dead of winter or the mid summer winter night? Yeah, Some exactly. Bullshit. It was flower That's blossom. that girl's fucking uh, sister. Okay. Yeah. I think she's in on it. Uh, I think she's just a, a weirdo. Yes. Great word. I like that. A weirdo. Well, she's definitely a weirdo, but I also think she's in on it. And that's all I can pin down so far. Or that's all I can have enough. They want you to think it's the trucker, clearly. Yeah, but I wonder if they're going to do the switcheroo of and course. maybe it's actually the trucker. <laughs> no, no, no. It's the gonna double be the tr- switcheroo. Yeah, well, the trucker is obviously a fucking bad guy. Clearly. He's up yeah. to no good shit. And that's why he's acting like a fucking asshole. He's like, you don't need to know anything, Shelly. You fucking shit. You <laughs> fucking sit down, Shelly. Fucking idiot. Like, because he's like, obviously a bad guy. Like, dude, He's like, the house needs to be clean. When I get home, do not lose my shirt. That's the second one this year. Like, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, bro. Chill out. It's the last time you're losing my shirt. I'm showing you what happens when shirts go losing this. <laughs> Shut up, Shelly. <laughs> like, so he's God. definitely, I don't think it's the, the it's bad not. boy boyfriend biker dude. Clearly not, but up. he is, he deserves to go to jail. We all know that. But what okay, I think so there's, there's multiple pieces of shits in the show, but I'm talking about the actual murderer is probably. I think it actually has to do with multiple pieces of shit. Have you uh, had the autopsy come back? No, no, no. Okay. Okay, don't spoil it for me. But well, no, obviously I'm going to have an autopsy, autopsy, but I won't go any further. Once you get to the autopsy part, there's some information there. I start to connect some stuff. Have you seen a place like a like a whorehouse yet or anything? Um. Uh... No. Oh, uh, it's okay. Well, okay. Well, up. make make your prediction for the people, though. Uh, I think I think the guy who owns the hotel that the body kind of like washed up in front of is like. Okay, the and, hotel that the yeah. the FBI guy like, stays at. Like the father or the girl that like is like in a bunch of inappropriate shit all the time. Hmm. He has a poke. I could describe him. Because I think he has the same tie for like three episodes. So uh, wow, that guy might or might not be involved. Well, that's strange. But there's definitely a switcheroo, and I have no idea where the fuck's going. Well, that I'm wondering if the ruined. trucker is. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I wonder if the trucker is a double switcheroo, where it's like he's you so douchey that you don't think it's him, but then it's actually him, or he's or he's involved. Does the show get so weird that you honestly think it's aliens are involved at some point? Um, yeah, there's a there's like a supernatural aspect to it at some point. Really? Uh, it all revolves around the fucking the FBI guy. Like he's the one I'm pretty sure he acts like a fuck. Like I told you, he acts like an alien for like good. Purpose. Yeah, he's my favorite character. Yeah, he's like super quirky and like funny. Yeah, he is definitely. He acts like an alien. That's the whole reason why I'm saying that. And like, and he he has like dream sequences, like Sherlock Holmes kind of thing. <laughs> but I have a vision, you know. When you get to see his vision, it's fucking out of this world. Like, it's probably how you would imagine an actual dream. He witnessed one of his dreams, and it's like wow. really good. like you know, like I'm just like, is he communicating with the fucking like another plane of existence right now? <laughs> like, it's really hard to tell what the hell's going on. Like, I could see I'm that because. Third. Full discretion. I'm not far. So I'm like, all I've seen is... I'm on episode one. I've seen a dream by the FBI guy, and that's about it. (laughs) And I'm just like, this is going to be like... There's no good people besides, like, the women. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Besides all the moms. All the moms are, like, neutral, I think. I haven't found a a bad mom yet, but, like, all the dads and shit have, like, side businesses and, like, yeah. (laughs) Hmm. All the single women that don't have children, they seem to be, like, all over the place, too. And the young okay. girls. It's a Mom. small town with a lot of drama. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the best part, man. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. It's it's actually pretty good. So. Not a trash can. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Anywho, 
And so we got we got Gideon outsmarting some people, or they're fighting their way down the hallway. Oh yeah, her gun jammed. I remember. Yeah, we're not even at Gideon yet. They're just fighting normal super troopers, <laughs> storm troopers, <laughs> super troopers. That's what I said. <laughs> them garbage, them garbage can. Kids. You boys like Rexy Cow? Yeah, they're the dumpster juice water Ew. troopers. Total garbage. But yeah, they're they have two obvious objectives and they're closing in on them. As Mando reaches the dark troopers cargo bay, the door opens and the droids complete their power up sequence. He dashes forward using Pershing's code cylinder to close the door. But one of the droids holds the door open and manages to get through. Mando when tries did he get a code them. cylinder? I'm sorry. Pershing when did he get it? Him. Who's that? Pershing. Elijah Wood. Frodo. Uh, oh, yeah. He gave it to him. I remember now. It feels like yesterday. The Pershing dude. Is he a bad guy? I think he's like like a like a Nazi scientist or something, you know? Okay, surface level not... Nazi scientist. But I feel like... I feel like he's being used by Gideon and all of them, but I don't know. His character, I would like to see him fleshed out a little bit. Well, you like, they're basically, the Empire is like clearly the Nazis, you know? So like all, all, all the drama that comes along with it, like just think about it. Mando filled that bounty for the freaking the Empire to start to get that Baskar that made his armor. His armor's made of blood money. Hmm. Yeah. From... Yeah. From the ruined uh, planet, you know. Yeah, Bulwer too. I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like Anna Frank, like working for Adolf Hitler kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, some real, <laughs> some real hard to take shit. That's why, like, Mando is getting so much crap from his fellow Mandalorians. Hmm. Mando tries fighting the droid despite its super superior strength and size, but has but his flamethrower has no effect, and his whistling birds do nothing more than stagger the droid. This is something you predicted. I did. Yeah. That he would fight one. No, that he was like gonna instantly like blow his fucking load like on something. You know, he's like oh, instantly yeah. with the whistling bird. You're like, there's no to defeat Gideon with a whistling bird. You know. And sure enough, yeah, they they wrote it that way. <laughs> Man, we should have went back and listened to prediction and like done a counter. Ding. Uh, it's not too late. <laughs> okay, cool. Whistling birds. Yeah, they're all empty. Eventually, though, he manages to destroy it with the Beskar staff and then depressurizes the bay, sucking the remaining droids into space. When that happened, I was kind of sad because the droids would have been an awesome fight. And then they all just kind of went, nope. You know what I mean? Well, that's the whole thing, man. Like, they could not handle him, you know? That's true. I guess the most he could do... Like, he fought one droid and he barely won. So Yeah, exactly. I guess they kept it real. that That was literally the only thing... I can't believe I didn't think of that, dude. Like the whole hit the airlock situation, you know, that's classic, classic Star war type of deal. Yeah, airlock. N- never done in Star Wars, but it is, a, it's like a Battlestar Galactica thing, you know, where they're like, never done in Star Wars? I don't think it, anybody's been launched out the airlock in Star Wars. Dude, every single space movie has an airlock. Part. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, this is like, they're fucking, they're bringing Star Wars into the modern age where they're like, he talked shit. Boom about the airlock, you know, like this is just that moment. He's just like blast him out into space. We can't handle him, you know. <laughs> and like nobody, they knew that he flew down to that fucking planet from like the atmosphere, right? <laughs> it flew down. Yeah, and the robots to that planet to say the capture baby Yoda with rocket boots. So I don't and know what he droids. Yeah, they have rocket boots and they don't need to breathe, anyways. Exactly. But like, let's talk about them fucking them droids real quick. And how they had to physically be filled up with coolant, like like with a meter, <laughs> you know, like do 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 do, you know. Wait, that was cool. I thought that was battery charge. <laughs> I don't know. They're like it draws too much electricity, but they're like they keep them in the in the cooling area to keep them cool. Like, are they on or off? Or I think they're filled with coolant or some shit. Like maybe it's battery. Maybe they're just batteries operated. I don't think that he was. They were actually keeping them cold. I think they were just storing them. Yeah, well, whenever they went over the plans in the beginning, they're like they're keeping them in the lower section for cold storage or some shit. Pretty much. Was positive. it cold storage? Or, oh, yeah. um, yep, in cold storage. Yeah, I watched yep. the episode twice. Huh. Trust well, I wonder me. why they kept them in the cold storage room. The, the plot requires them to split up, I guess. Hmm. But it Great. was kind of silly. 
and they hit it with that dubstep, that robot music. Oh, I remember that. A little jarring. Yeah, that was, I think, the point. You're like supposed to, like, your chest was supposed to swell up. You're like, here they come. You know? <laughs> yeah. The bad <Okay>. robots. <laughs> In the turbo lift, Dune fixes her gun, and she and the others enter the bridge, mowing down all the stormtroopers here. Bo-Katan realizes Gideon is not there. Ooh, split him up. What's Bo-Katan going to do? I'm about to find out. Mando reaches the cell, do? dispatching the two troopers guarding it with the Biscar staff. He enters to find Grogu in shackles, and Gideon holding oh. the dark saber over him. Dead. When I saw that, uh no thanks. I was like, look at those baby shackles. I mean, those are cute, yes, but whenever Gideon's holding a sword to baby Yoda, maybe mad. Hell yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, got your heart, my baby. You know. So speaking of in the turbo lift. What? Them them their turbo lift. She's dropping the end bomb, fixing her gun. Some the Star word Wars you're curve. thinking of is uh is uh it's like it's super weird. Flying daggered. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Cuss word Mandalorian. Dink Ferrick. <laughs> uh, it is the swear staple on the Mandalorian. <laughs> Dink Ferrick. Well, I'll have what they're having, apparently. What does Dink Ferrick mean? It means how rude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what? Think, I don't think that's true. They probably just. There's probably not anything that says what it means. Yeah, it's uh because it's edited out off the internet, but we know what it is. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Uh. Mando says he can keep the sword. He just wants the kid. Gideon agrees, saying he has gotten all he wanted for the child. Uh, from the child to study his blood, which has the potential to bring order back to the galaxy. As Mando <gasps> reaches for Grogu. Gideon activates the dark saber and attacks him. There's a split second where I thought he wasn't gonna attack him. Yeah, I was like, just like that. <laughs> I was thinking, this is what I was thinking. I was thinking Mandalorian was gonna get the baby. They were gonna turn around, start walking out. Bo Katan busts in, shoots Gideon. Gideon blocks it. That was the fight start. I thought that's what was gonna happen. But yeah, I was expecting a giant drag out brawl but a 1v1 is not bad especially since yeah he's just super old <laughs> yeah i thought he was gonna have the force too yeah, yeah we kind of definitely hyped that up a lot <laughs> so he's gonna be in an iron man suit and no, none of that but you know what happened way cooler i'm glad they fucking wrapped this bullshit up to finish the way they did yeah. you know yeah yeah and like we got 12 minutes to fuck cork so. <laughs> As Mando reaches for Grogu, uh, Gideon activates the dark saber and attacks him. Before Mando deactivates Gideon, or sorry, disarms Gideon, since Mando needs Gideon alive for questioning for the Republic. So basically, Mando doesn't kill him; he just disarms him. Oh, okay. He he's bringing him in alive like a bounty hunter, like a cop. Mando. Okay, so they just like a, killed. Like a space this is cop. the problem I had. They killed hundreds of stormtroopers, but then don't kill the one that would probably cause the most. Oh, well, I guess they need it for questioning. Okay, I guess that makes sense. They they say it multiple times where they're like, he was ex CIS or something, which is like clearly the FBI, whatever space mm-hmm. <laughs> space FBI. He was he was Central Intelligence, you know? Yeah, like he was an yeah. Intelligence officer. So like they want his secrets. Yeah, People he's like torture the fuck out of him. Good old Nazi torture scene in Star Wars. <laughs> uh, Mando enters the bridge holding the dark saber and Grogu and pushing Gideon, who is now in shackles. Bo Katan turns and looks at him, asking what happened. Dune says now, that he brought Let me let me intervene. Skipped over some crucial shit. What he got what he needed from Baby Yoda. Oh, oh man. Okay. So the what are they called him? Uh, the the enemies the bad guys got Imperial? the man, got the, the magic DNA yes. from Baby Yoda. They're trying to shoehorn that in, I think. Well, it seems like they're doing a, a Marvel's a Marvel thing. Thrawn is going to be man. What's the big blue guy? Uh, uh, Thanos purple. 
Purple Thanos. Thanos. Yeah. 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 So like Thrawn's gonna be Thanos. Yeah. You're gonna have all these Avengers come together. It's gonna be Boba Fett, Mandalorian, dual building Jedi lady. Uh, yes. Who else? And they were, and they're all gonna be women, and they're all gonna be like, "Fuck men." <laughs> like the men are gonna be like cowering in a corner, like, "Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am." <laughs> Just like Marvel. <laughs> Just like Marvel. Just like they did with the oh, women doing best uh, scene in the good game. It's oh, like, and here it is. And Thrawn is gonna have Thrawn is gonna be floating, and he's gonna have baby DNA. That's what it's gonna be. No. And he's gonna be in an Iron Man suit. <laughs> They're like stage three. We got rid of the 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 weakness to the to the dark troopers. I'm like, I don't think that's true. Robots are fucking retarded. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Me thinking about Thrawn <laughs> as a Jedi makes my ears tingle. I could see it. He like gets the force power and the thing that's crazy though is like none of this whatever happens in this mandalorian world appears in the movies so like it can't be that big well i think they're like also trying to retcon everything that happened in the movies honestly like if you look at the contrast between the end of this episode and like what they've done to a beloved character (laughs) we'll talk about it later but have they retconned anything in star wars that's a good question. I feel like they've been keeping the everything pretty like tied up, you know, and not just completely like well between the last Jedi and uh whatever the revenge of Skywalker or whatever. <laughs> they yeah. uh they basically like retconned Luke being a fucking dickhead about throwing the lightsaber at the beginning. It's like this is a Jedi's tool, not sub thing to be discarded and then he looks to the camera and winks like <laughs> the last movie started with him like throw the lightsaber over his shoulder like Marr! you know <laughs> so then he farts and then runs away <laughs> so i need to rewatch that <laughs> they <laughs> they retconned luke's thoughts personality yeah Okay. <laughs> and they desperately tried to fix a bunch of shit. Like Han shot. All right, let me explain myself. You said Han shot first. First, that old that old meme. Wait, so they're trying to say that he did not shoot first? Well, yeah. George Lucas literally went back and like edited the movie <laughs> to fix it. They're like, ah, he shot in defense, self defense. He actually, Greedo said that he was going to shoot him and han was just reacting to greedo's aggression like so he went back and and put in different audio oh my god i've told you about this before haven't i mcclunky no fuck boy you're in for a treat so this original version where han's is like try me and he like shoots greedo dead and he flops over on the table and then there's like an updated version like the early 90s where like they like edit they have like a wide frame of like hot holding the gu- blaster under the table. And then like literally like shoot the bullet out of Greedo's gun. Han, like they like edited Han's neck to like dodge it. And then shot, he shot in retaliation. Like the whole fucking thing was like, wow. Washed. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. So and then not only that, but whenever George sold <laughs> Star Wars to Disney, he gave him a copy that he edited an, an additional time. Really? It is fucking awful. Um, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It, yeah, it's in McClunky. <laughs> you can spell it is, anyway, and it'll autocorrect, I'm sure. This is super weird. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, I mean. And he decides to make it to where he says McClunky without any subtitles. And then he, then the whole thing happens where he shoots him. Wait, well, what does McClunky mean? Nobody fucking knows. Uh, okay, some keen... <gasps> and in a recent Mandalorian episode, someone yells, Mc... oh, it's in this episode! Hilarious. Yes, okay, great. It's Huddies. What they're speaking is a language called Huddies. So they're Huddies. So people from Tatooine speak Huddies. Okay, right? like... Or people that huts. work with the huts on Tatooine speak Huddies. Okay. So... In the episode one with baby Anakin, baby Darth Vader, mm-hmm. right? Pod racing Darth Vader. He uh, has a, a rival pod racer called 
Saboba, and he's talking shit. He's like, "Oh, what a wanga, Saboba!" <laughs> you know, like <laughs> fucking mocking each other. He's like, "Uh, Picha Joyo Makalunki or some shit." He's like, "Oh, this will this will be the last time I tell you what or some bullshit." So he's basically like, "Watch your back," you know. Okay. So like, is like, "I'm gonna get you, or get him, or go get him, or get you, or something." You know, some sort of aggressive like. Oh, okay. Okay. Or, okay. You know? It's a very veiled threat <laughs> so like i don't know <laughs> people were like hey sabalba said it and it's in the subtitle so george remembers ev- all the language right he doesn't reuse any of it and fuck it up ever so, so he no. edited the word mcclunkian because that's an aggressive thing and so that yeah he was like they edited the laser cute see he was the reason why he shot so fast <laughs> in this edit is because he was he was aware that he was about to get shot at Okay. Point. Han is a scoundrel, Ooh. and he he has a character arc. That's the character arc. He's an asshole that murders in cold blood, and then he goes and saves the princess, and then he's like, "Hey, man, I uh, I could change," <laughs> you know? Right. That's right. all the character arc. And George Lucas didn't realize what he had done, <laughs> you know? And then he still like continually is trying to fix that one thing. This is like this <laughs> is the theme in Star Wars, besides like Chewie not getting a medal at the end of the mm. first movie. Wow, <laughs> like this this goes back a long ways, and like we look at the post credits on this show, and we see a McClunky reference. <laughs> We're like, what the hell's that noise, McClunky? <laughs> oh, in the Boba Fett part. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I tell you that that edit is McClunky as hell. You know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, it looks not. It reminds me of the weird Johnny like, Knoxville thing from Men in Black. His little tiny baby lips are moving, McClunky. You know. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Not the best at it at all. Mm. And that's a billionaire. Yeah. Uh, Dune says that he has brought Gideon in, in alive and that the New Republic will have to double the payment. Gideon laughs and says it's not what she meant. Bo Katan wants the Darksaber, but it can only be taken by defeating the wielder in battle. As Mando defeated Gideon, the dark saber now belongs to him. He can neither he can either give her the dark saber or yield to her. As the power of the dark saber lies not in the weapon itself, but in the story around it. Okay, and see, like, okay, so uh, Gus had the dark saber. They fought. He surrendered. Now Mando's the dark saber. It's not like yeah. it's life or death. Like, why don't they just duel for a little bit? Mando gives up, and that's it. Uh, I guess, I guess so. Yeah, I so guess like, I don't see what the big deal is. They, he just really does not want to fight because <laughs> she'll play for keeps. Yeah, like, it's, like he says, it's about the legend, it's not about the item. So, like, I killed the owner of the dark saber, you know, it's like much, much cooler. Yeah, but you could just make something up. <laughs> Me and I instantly thought, I was like, just hand Gideon the dark saber and let her fucking. <laughs> kick his ass one last time you know but she would have probably killed him <laughs> so mm. i was like man or hand it right back to him. well no because if, <laughs> if he hands gideon the dark saber it still is not gideon's dark saber yeah well uh semantics <laughs> semantics my dude <laughs> and man don't take his helmet off <laughs> so just kidding he's gonna do it rules. a bunch of episodes in a row <laughs> oh yeah we saw so much face i forgot Jeez, what the helmet looked like yeah exactly that's all like he shaved apparently for the last time we saw him <laughs> that must be hard to do wearing a mask yeah the whole time oh it sounds like you're disloyal to the lorians my dude <laughs> uh, you know he's playing the bad guy in wonder woman good for him yeah all right an alarm sounds and Shannon reports that the ship's ray shields have been breached by the dark troopers. Yeah, Gideon it's like, then... we got incoming. And they're like, oh, how many life signs are there? Zero. Yeah. Like, <gasps> Everyone looked at each other like, pop, pop, pop. You could like literally hear the trumpet in the background. <laughs> uh, so wait, what did they fly back? Yeah, I don't know space, why it took them so fucking Back into the ship? Yeah. I guess they had to fly all the way around the ship back to the entrance. Yeah, I guess they had to make an entrance, honestly. I think that's why the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 ray shields went down. Oh, that's right. that's right. They couldn't get back in. Yeah, I think they were shooting in the ray shields the whole time. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, okay, okay. Gideon then questions Mando's ability to fight the platoon since he had been, he had trouble with one droid. 
As the droids march towards the bridge, Gideon covers a drop blaster with his cape. Mando and his allies prepare to fight as the dark troopers begin to pound through the blast doors. Hey, that's that's like a go-to Star Wars maneuver. Of course, like you probably hear that more yeah. in the movie than anything. But seal the gate. Now close the blast doors. Yeah, that's it's like poetry. So that it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it the same nice line over there. Cadence to it. <laughs> yeah. Seal the uh, fat. I don't know, whatever. Are you trying to make a, what's that poem called? Haiku. Haiku. <laughs> yes. Wanders gallantly. <laughs> Pitter Flowers bloom, blossom winter. <laughs> a mistake. Like Made me cringe. I don't know. <laughs> All uh, right, another alarm sounds, and a lone X-wing fighter flies past the cruiser as the ship lands in the docking bay. Bo oh Katan my god! By themselves. Oh my god! Yeah, bro. Okay, who's X-wing? I, I there's I was like, there's only one X-wing in this entire fucking galaxy. Like, you, you, <laughs> I I felt the entire fandom's joy like reaching out through the force. I was like, this is it, man. I've done it. <laughs> I was like, I can't fucking believe it, dude. I was like, no, surely it's a go- no, no. I was like, they can't do it. Luke Skywalker's dead. No, no. I was, I was blown the fuck away, man. Oh, Genuinely. Yeah, me too. Me too. Genuinely. I, I know you didn't even know what you were looking at the whole time. You're like, this could be Mace Windu. We could be anyone. But like, dude, that cloak and that, that gloved hand, bro. He's got the Michael Jackson glove on. I knew it. Was- <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was him until it showed his face. <laughs> I know. I can feel it. I can feel you <laughs> through the floor, sir. Yeah, it was, um, it was a fucking like, like a like. I could feel my heart filling up with joy. It was like, like, like a new puppy dog or like a child being born or something. You know, like <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. <laughs> like this was. It was a great moment. So basically, Luke like- Skywalker comes in and just does everything you would imagine Luke Skywalker at the end of Return of the Jedi, you know? This is really wanted, you know, I kind of wanted a wise Luke that knew what he was doing that could, like, do some, like, insane shit that you've never seen before, but this was fine. This was a, it showed just masterful skill and calculation, you know? Yeah, he was Jedi Master Luke, for sure. Like, not Jedi Artisan, he, I don't know, he may, he may have been still learning, you know? Well, he wasn't so, like in the new Disney movies, he's like past Jedi Master. He's like, yeah, he's an artisan version. You know, he's like, he's the end game version. Yeah. He's like probably like a force manifestation, but he's also a f- fucking coward asshole. Hold on. <laughs> a manatee t- t- suckling, wimpy, elderly coward. Yeah. Jake Skywalker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read that off of something? Yes, <laughs> I wrote that down uh, earlier. It's yeah. <laughs> like, wait for it. I, I have the, the perfect saying. You're like, I know what to call this guy. This this man was a, a shell of what he left the fandom with, you know. <laughs> and I was like, I can't fucking yeah. believe it, you know. Like that's why I'm thinking it's an alternate universe altogether because I'm like, this Luke and that Luke are not the same fucking people at all, and they never will yeah. be. I need to rewatch him because I don't remember like his sour attitude as well. I remember he was like, "You need to watch that snarky. fucking video that I sent you. Like that'll that'll just like distill it down to like a fine broth, sir." But, but wasn't it that he had a he had Kylo Ren and then Kylo Ren turned bad and then that's what made Luke like be all mad all the time. Kylo Ren turned bad. Why? Because Luke tried to kill him. Wait, because he was scared thought... of how strong he was in the force because he was training him in the force like a fucking dummy. He's like, I'm he's, he's got straight A's. I gotta get rid of him. You know, like fucking Rob with like his one hundreds, you know. He's like, I well, can't I give was... anybody a hundred. It's physically impossible. This guy's well, acing everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hmm. Well, I thought he tried to kill him because he thought he was evil. Well, because he was I don't Nobody knows. <laughs> it's up in the oh. air at, still, I think. You know, like what? There was a scene wow. where he talks to Ray. And he's like, I saw this power. Or, oh, I don't remember. I really don't remember. I'm sorry. I, my knowledge, I, I tried to block it out of my memory because I'm like, <laughs> this is 
this is unbelievable. So unbelievable. I can't believe it is even real. <laughs> this must be a dream. Huh. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out. Let's wrap this up so we can uh, talk more about green milk. <laughs> uh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gogu looks up, sensing something. The dark troopers stop their attack on the floor or on the door and turn around. Bo-Katan watches on the monitor as a hooded figure disembarks and walks through the ship, destroying dark troopers with a lightsaber. Skillfully, with his... beautifully, like a dance. He was dancing yes. through the hallways. You could it's have put any, any music over it. Any music. It could have been fucking the, like the Doom Mr. soundtrack. Blue, Mr. Blue Sky would have been a great song. Yeah. You, Rain you know drops are falling on my head. <laughs> I mean that's not the song, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Mr. Blue, yeah, you know, Mr. Blue Sky, you know, yeah, you know what? <laughs> okay, uh, so but he's just walking through. He's just killing these dark troopers. Skillfully, left right. skillfully killing them, like he fucking put them in a trance, like he's like inside the Matrix or something. Like, like they yeah. sensed his presence, or some somebody programmed them to like change their their main target. You know. Like yeah. they were programmed to know who and what Luke Skywalker did, his legacy up to that point. He was the reason why the Empire fell. He was continuing to fight out there against them. He was a well known rebel general. His mm. legacy preceded him. And it was obvious by the way they reacted to him. Okay. Well, I just thought that they had sensors in them that told them what the most dangerous thing was. That sounds like a Star Wars thing. Yeah. So, like, they were like, hold up, some way back here is way more dangerous. And they turn around and just like, his power level's over 9,000. Yeah, just like that. (laughs) Gideon grabs a blaster and shoots at Bo Katan, knocking her to the ground. As he stands and fires, Mando leaps in front of Grogu, protecting him from the shots. Gideon stops shooting, then raises the pistol to his chin to kill himself. But Dune knocks it out of his hand, then knocks him unconscious. That was a surprising Fucking part. Power, right? By Gideon's reaction, do you think my statements would be accurate? Or Wait, what? The way uh, Gideon reacted, like pissing his pants, filling his boots up with shit, fear, <laughs> ready to kill himself rather than face the wrath of Luke Skywalker. Oh, like saying Luke is a known leader known quantity of, the... of Yeah, 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 yeah. Rebels. Um, Sir. Okay, well, let's see. Yeah, he's definitely a known leader because no fear about anything else up to that point. Wait, what? He was he's a cold he's just like Gus fucking Frank, dude. He's cold blooded murderer, worthless. Yeah. But then he fucking sees a lightsaber and he shits his pants. Yeah. There's only one lightsaber. Well, there's two. <laughs> it's so obvious now, you know, we're like, please bring Mace Windu back. Oh my god, I'm so glad they went this direction. Yeah, I'd say they do know him because he's Princess Leia's sister or brother, and Princess Leia is, is known, right? Uh, yeah. So he's fairly well known. He's popular too, so he knows who he is for sure. Yeah, he he's, he's got to because it's pretty. You know, rather than get captured. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a very Grogu. Thrawn thing to do. What? Sounds like a very Thrawn thing to do. I'm pretty sure that's Thrawn's like idea is like, do not be captured under any circumstances. Yeah. 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 What kind of shit do you think they have over them if <laughs> that's the only option? Hmm. A family? What? Destruction of the well, planet? No, I don't think they would hold something hostage or blackmail them. It's probably anyone at that level has it's... devoted their whole everything to that position. Honor and, and duty? Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because well, they have, it's. They have done that with like those freaking uh pilots in their earlier part of this episode another thing what do you mean where they're like glory to the empire and then like the previous episode with the freaking guy <laughs> taking shots to the empire you know yeah like, i think they're guy, all pretty brainwashed it's loyalty brand it's loyalty brand they kind of it's fashionable yeah i mean he's brainwashed just like all the rest of the stormtroopers you know the only one who's probably not brainwashed is probably Thrawn. True, because he's the brainwashy. He's the Charlie Manson of the group. Yeah, so that's what I think is going on, which is just like uh, World War II, you know. But there's always a guy behind the guy, you know. There's always somebody pulling the strings, even beyond Thrawn, I'm sure. Oh, boy. Like the Emperor. Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Reincarnated Baby Yoda. He's like, we got what we needed. Thrawn's actual real consciousness 
Mystery solved. Uh, Who saved him from the Jedi Temple? The Grogu wrong. reaches for the monitor, watching as the Jedi destroys the last of the Dark Troopers. Mando tells them to open the blast doors, but Shan thinks he's crazy, so he does it himself. Gosh. The Jedi enters. Huh? He doesn't just finish off the last Dark Trooper. He like... Oh, that's right. Flourished style, you know? He crushed him. He like... Took one of their heads off, took the head, threw it, knocked one out, and then the last one, he was just like, fucking, he, he took his time with him, you know? Yeah. He like, he, he did a quick little display. He's like, y'all watching on the monitors now? Like, just <laughs> crushed him, you know? That shit can punch oh, him, man. you know? <laughs> that yeah. Was the last door. And he just that like was, crumpled it. was a up. great intro. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was a great cameo. It was the best cameo probably of like all history you know like yeah it's, it's up there my dude yeah this moment's gonna be talked about for a while and the fact that they kept it a secret and this is this apparently was filmed a year ago and they oh yeah that under wraps this whole time it was like unfucking believable little Wayne is president i fuck him even though they sell him it <laughs> the game's as crazy as it's ever been that is pretty remarkable i wonder if uh mark hamill had a credit yeah on he, somewhere. he was apparently on set during that no, no 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 i mean like before it was released oh uh, well i think they may have held off on the mdb update but he yeah. definitely dropped some hints he's like y'all watch any good tv lately like, <laughs> was like this guy that's funny no, uh, he's a- all right, the Jedi enters and he pulls back his hood to reveal he is Luke Skywalker. Woo! What'd you think of the computer animation face? Uh, I'm this, sh- I should have fucking known this whole time because they apparently like did the same thing and like Rogue had an actor that looked similar and then they melted a face onto him. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Disney is like breaking that technology, so like they definitely for sure, like, probably the best at it so yeah i thought it was pretty good you know everybody's hating it but i thought it looked pretty good and what happens in every movie you know with any actress that's over 25 they have the shit done to them you know Hmm. like i I should you not (laughs) it's like in their contract where they're just like fucking uh blush all this shit out go millions of dollars worth of man hours to make me wrinkle free through the whole movie you know Hmm. i guess i believe it yeah, I'm like, of course it's in their contract, <laughs> you know. You're like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta secure my next gig. I can't have crow's feet. Ever. Yeah, not once. Are you trying to huh? make me homeless? You just turned me into a bum. <laughs> <laughs> Taking food out of my mouth. Here. All right, Mando asks if he's a Jedi, which Skywalker confirms. He then holds out his hand to Grogu, who hesitates and turns to Mando. Mando says. Grogu doesn't want to go with him, but Skywalker says he just wants Mando's permission. Skywalker pledges to give his life to protect Grogu, but says that but says that talent without training is nothing. Skywalker adds that he will not be safe until he masters his abilities. <laughs> yes. The so student has train become him. the teacher. I he's going it. to train. Dude, Mando picks when up I Grogu. when I saw him open that damn door, I was I was praying. I was like, I'm Luke Skywalker and I'm here to rescue you. I was like, please <laughs> say something I know. But he was just like, Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? I was like, oh, all right. That's, that's <laughs> he all was right. very cash. He was very like <laughs> like fucking like <laughs> so he was begging us, you know, like we're like, oh my god, he's so dreamy. Like <laughs> what's, up? what's up, guys? It's Thing. I was like, oh, like, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Well, anyway, I happen to clear the hall- <laughs> hallway. There's not a single fucking dead body when I'm going to walk out of here. It just <laughs> vaporized into complete atoms. I'll let you know. I could do that with my mind. <laughs> I'm not going to trip over anything. I don't even need to look down anymore. I can see it. I don't even walk. I just float all the time. Yeah, exactly. I was like, like Dende and Dragon Ball Z. Constant. Yeah. Like Mars Attack. <laughs> like, roll across the ground <laughs> yeah he uh <clears throat> presence among them but god dang he was so humble wasn't he wasn't he just the most humble humblest man i was like oh my god like he was he was scared, terrifying you saw you could kind of yeah. see the in all the mandalorians face they're like oh my god this man can destroy us you know <laughs> the door, as humble as can be like yeah i'll train the, the little guy so i'm here yeah keep him safe 
That's at great. least I could do it. An old one of these helped me out. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, he mentions Yoda. Did he? I don't even Wait. <laughs> I reckon. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The the girl Jedi mentioned Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, Jesus Christ, he mentioned Yoda. Yeah, Roll that it mixed up. Like, <laughs> like 0.25 speed. <laughs> Syntax in every language. <laughs> yeah, syntax. I need, I need subtitles. <laughs> Mando picks up Grogu and tells him to go with Luke and that they'll meet again. Grogu reaches for his helmet, which Mando removes, showing his face to his young chart for the first time. He tells Grogu not to be afraid and places him on the ground. R2-D2 enters and Grogu walks towards the droid. Oh my god. The whole gang is here. Yeah. So, and he watches... (laughs) It, Mando watches them go with tears in his eyes. And... Oh, man. Yeah, well, tears as well before that moment. I was like, "Oh yeah," I was blowing my nose like into my shirt. I was like, "I can't believe it!" <laughs> He's like, "Take your helmet off!" Oh, no! oh yeah, I can't believe it. It was great. It's not the way. <laughs> He'd not teach him a single thing, dude. Yeah, the episode that was one of the best endings to a se- season I've ever seen. It hit that dude, you fucking you saw that banner mission complete. I was like, oh, he finished yeah. his like a campaign was finished. It's like that's such a glorious thing, like a fucking unicorn or a rainbow. Like, oh my god, a finale, like a final final finale, a final yeah. fucking finale, a finale that was ending. Like, I was like. I can't believe it. He walked out of there with baby Yoda. He's gone. He's just <laughs> walked out with him. And yeah. Archie waddled in. Waddled in. Oh my god. I can't believe it. It was a beautiful experience. That was great. <laughs> I, I hope I see more baby Yoda. Oh, he's he might be in a spinoff or he might be gone. That's the disastrous part about that. Man. Definitely hope there's more of him, more of Luke, more Mando. Uh, who else I want to see? Oh, Boba Fett, um, twin lightsaber girl, Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think about Bo Katan and uh, yeah, the Funky Bunch? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. They're okay. They're kind of just stereotypical meathead <laughs> soldiers. Yeah. Ugh, I'm gonna fight. Boba Fett's my unique. Back. <clears throat> Boba Fett's good because he's not like good or bad, and he likes melee weapons, you know, and like I don't know. He's a unique character. He's he's got everything. He's literally like fucking Batman. You know, he's like bad Batman, evil Batman. That's kind of yeah. what he was. But he apparently had a change of heart. Just like every single person in this damn season, they all they all had redemption arcs. Some sort of arc, yeah. Dude, everybody had a redemption. Look, freaking Mando started off working for the Empire. He like that was the first redemption arc. And then, oh yeah, that's true. Taking bounties from the bad guys. Kara was a bounty hunter. She Fett was a homeless man. Oh yeah, he um, was literally like a wild animal out in the desert. <laughs> He's like, all right, civilized now. With I got my armor, I'm good. Where's my ship? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, they, they brought him in. They brought him in. Yeah, oh, very I good. I love it. Very very good. But the contrast between this was this is what. Disney destroyed. This is Legends Luke. All right. This is all the shit that was in the books. Like Luke doing like reading minds. He's reading Baby Yoda's minds. He's force crushing shit. He was force pulling and pushing and like smashing shit well beyond like normal means. He was skillfully dancing and slicing stuff to bits, you know, like <clears throat> not a care mm-hmm. of the world. And this is the kind of stuff that they kind of got rid of and they needed to recanonize. And this is probably the best way they could do it. So this yeah. is a show. Yeah, I mean, it was great show written and directed by a fan you know and like the services appreciated <laughs> that's for sure yeah yeah it was a great show oh. i'm definitely gonna watch all the spinoffs oh that's that's what i'm saying this this is the iron man for the star wars show yeah this is iron man and we're about to get both it's gonna be like what captain america and maybe then, uh maybe some like hawkeye bullshit you know <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And Bo Katan is gonna be like uh, Squirrel Girl, Black Widow, <laughs> yeah, Squ- Squirrel Girl, or there you something. go. <laughs> okay, well, 
Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Um, who saved Baby Yoda? <laughs> oh yeah, it was great. It was a journey. The, there's so many questions un, unanswered though. Yeah, the whole Thrawn thing. Like what? Who Where's saved that? Baby Yoda from the Jedi Temple? That's something that's so brought up. Oh, in the first place, yeah. Yeah, we like, don't know. Nobody knows, right? People, people think he was like, uh, like hidden or something, hidden away. I mean, that's kind of a weird question because there's a lot of ways Baby Yoda could escape something like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the Force thing. Darth Vader would have sensed them, right? Um, Kind of. <laughs> Darth Vader was never that good with the Force. It's kind of like really? a, a brawler. But he, cho- he chokes people. Yeah, he's he's kind of he's he, he's more physical than like spiritual. He can't like reach through the galaxy and like if somebody's reaching out to him, he can be like, I sense something, you know, it's like a oh. proximity thing for the most part. Oh, so Luke is like the opposite. Um, I don't know. Yoda was more like I sense everything at all times and I feel death everywhere. You know, when did Yoda say that in the original? He's like, ah, in the Oh, I think it was actually Obi Wan who's like, I felt a, a million or billions of lives cry out in pain and then stop instantly, you know, when the dust Alderaan and it blew up. Oh, I misquote wow. the fuck out of it. <laughs> Edit all this out. Just, just delete the whole pod. <laughs> I'll just clip, I'll just copy his voice and never mind. <laughs> it's copyrighted. We're going to jail for that. Don't do it. Oh, I'll listen to it and then I'll mimic his voice and then I'll play it and that's how i'll do it that's the trick i think that's the trick right there i think that's the only way to do it well, that's pretty cool i didn't realize the difference in their force um but also but here's another thing is who cares about who saved him oh well that's the same person who trained him but yeah who also cares about that though because baby yoda has zero training uh well he might be a fucking rascal rabbit <laughs> i think i think honestly he's like being Tricksty. I think he knows like he a lot more than he fucking... doing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. There's the whole thing. Oh. Like... Soka did say that he had to suppress his powers to survive. Yeah. So I don't know if he like dumbed down his intelligence or if he's just like, I'm your wee will baby. Boo, boo, boo. Like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's putting on a show. <laughs> That's very likely. But you can see there's stuff going on up there, but. You know, he can drink from a cup, you know, and it's like, that's something. But let's not everybody can do that. Let's talk about all the the good guys that appear to be bad guys and the bad guys that appear to be good guys. It's a connection. Okay. Grogu. Remember the <clears throat> first episode? Sheriff guy. Sheriff yeah. guy. No, what? First episode Worm. of this TV series. Giant Worm. Oh, season one? Season one. Baby Yoda episode one. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, he was in a desert town. And he got the he got the quest to get the baby. He did it to Return another to desert town. <laughs> I think a bunch of desert, a lot of sand. Yeah, he got the baby, then he stole the baby back. So, um, Carl Weathers, remember, there. remember, just recently, yeah, with the pirates, yes, that are in fact rebels that are fighting the empire. Oh, yeah, okay. What do you think those guys in that town that were holding baby Yoda were doing? You mean the civilians? The people that IG-88 and Mando mowed down. Um, Like the, the pirates? The pirates in episode one. They were. They were trying. Wait a minute. Well, what does this have to do with episode one? Were they pirates? In episode one? Yeah. The people that were stealing baby Yoda? Or they? they had baby Yoda? Were they stealing baby Yoda? Uh, I don't recall. Or they had were him, they protecting they? baby Yoda from bounty hunters? That were being sent out by the Empire. Oh, so you're saying that Mandalorian put this whole thing into what's the word? Uh, orbit or whatever. Yeah. Revolution. Well, the own. Empire did it, but like, remember he he sent that puck to all the all the bounty hunters in that bar, but only IG88 and Mando made it there. You know, so uh-huh. IG88 and Mando mowed down the entire town. And if it weren't for Mando, that baby would be dead. You know, IG-88 had different orders or he thought he was only going to bring him in dead. So, huh. okay. Those yeah, guys so are there him. literally protecting baby Yoda <laughs> from murderous bounty hunters. Huh. That's not good. So I'm thinking maybe that he was dropped off there by whoever saved him. Maybe, well, that was like 20 years ago. So maybe something happened. 
I don't know. That's very uh, hard to speculate. It is, but the bad guys are sometimes the good guys, and the good guys are sometimes the bad guys. Okay, well, this like... is very interesting because that's a. It's basically saying that Mando is a bad guy the whole time. Well, I've I've always had that theory where I'm like. There, he's teaming up with fucking Boba Fett, which is a notorious bad guy who froze Han Solo and sold him to Jabba the Hutt. You know, that's it sounds good in theory, but they're definitely fighting the actual bad guys e- through the whole show. You are right. You're absolutely right. They are, in fact, fighting stormtroopers almost the entire time. <laughs> An undeniable fact, but <laughs> that's no. where the story arc comes from. Their redemption arc is beautiful. Love it. Yeah. That's an interesting thought, though. They all they always start off one way, and that's I guess you got to start a redemption arc by being a fucking <laughs> bastard, you know. Just like Han Solo shooting first, George, <laughs> figure it I don't out. No, the other guy shot first, and Han Solo's neck. You know how he has that neck like, with like Gumby. three joints in it. <laughs> and then don't worry, he said, "Hey, I'm going to shoot you." In one word, McClanky. McClanky. Pew. All right, I guess that's the end of the episode. There's no no more content to be had in this episode. I Nothing. suppose not. All I right, we'll, we'll just let the credits roll. Oh wait, what's that? <laughs> what's, what's this? There's 20 it's, minutes left in the show. What's going on here? The it's the epilogue. Rolling. It's the first epilogue in the entire show run. All right, at Jabba's palace on Tatooine, Jabba's former. Major Domo Bin Fortuna speaks to his henchmen Bib? in Hutt. I think it's Bib, right? Bib Hatuna. Or Bib Fortuna. Fortuna. He's the Bib he's the Wadawanga Fortuna. guy. He's the notorious really? honey. He's Wadawanga. Yeah. Wadawanga. Wow. Bib Fortuna's the Wadawanga guy. Wow. Look at that. I'll be. So when shouting. A blaster fire is heard in the halls above. Finnick Shand enters, killing two Gamorian guards, firing at the other fleeing gangsters, and what? freeing a Twi'lek slave girl. What does Bibbs Fortuna say? It, uh, it doesn't say. What What does he say? Does he say McClick? He says something Wadawonga McClunky. <laughs> really? No, he doesn't say Wadawonga, but <laughs> he definitely is like, ah, <laughs> the fuck McClunky. And he says, more your guards over there. And I shit you Wadawonga. not, they, they recreate the same palace scene when Leia comes in. Like, she's like, what's that ruckus? And then shoots somebody down the staircase and they roll down the staircase just like that. It was a callback. Huh. Yeah. It's a callback, sir. It's beautiful. Boba Fett walks in behind Finnick and Fortuna laughs, saying he thought Boba was dead and he's pleased to see him. Fett shoots Fortuna dead and throws his body on the floor, taking the throne as Shan swings from a bottle of spacha and takes her place at his side. End of epilogue. <laughs> takes a sip of Nuka Cola. <laughs> was that... Straight that was a great blue. little thing where it's like, he takes a seat on the throne and the camera's low looking up and you know it's like that's a throne. You oh, know, it was like a it was like the main menu on a video game where your character's sitting there while you like scroll through and it's playing like inspirational, like epic music. Yes, sir. It's a that's very it like. very Duke Nukem of him. Yeah, he, yes. he had the woman at, at his side, like here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yes, you need to have and like at least a few catchphrases. An bubble gum. In a mole out of bubble gum. <laughs> I can't remember to make some catchphrases. I've I've been slacking. That's the only one I know. That's the best one. And that's from They Live. Link in the description below to that episode. Oh yeah, They Live. Wow. Everything that's comes hilarious. back to They Live, sir. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, I'm excited for Boba Fett show. I'm gonna watch that for sure. Boba the Hut. He's straight. <laughs> straight went in there cartel style you saw that well the hut <laughs> hut is literally like yeah. a cartel but fuck oh. insane i i was dude a fuck get out of here could we talk about an emotional roller coaster jesus mm-hmm. <laughs> jiminy christmas it was it was a lot this whole episode was a lot and then they tossed yeah. in a boba fett yeah. spinoff i'm like oh and it was like they all looked at the camera and posed like it was the cheesiest thing it was a little cheese, but I liked it. It was total cheese, and I loved it. 
<laughs> I love cheese so much. All right. Well, you got anything else to add? Um, so R2 D2 totally recognized Groom without a doubt. Oh. Without a doubt. I mean, I kind of have a doubt because I don't know. There wasn't like a clear for sure, like, oh, like they didn't do like a secret handshake, you know. <laughs> you don't know R2 D2 kinda... like I do. Okay. He wa when he waddled, that was basically like him screaming at the top of his lungs, like, buddy. Oh. It's, it's okay. It's a uh it's a common droid courtesy to wiggle when you see somebody you've saved from the Jedi Temple. Very few know <laughs> this. Check the Wikipedia archive. You'll see it deep down in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you the link. I got to look for it. <laughs> you, okay, so you're saying RGD2 could have possibly been the one to save Grogu from the from the happening. From from Order 69, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I have no clue, obviously. <laughs> well, there was in the movies, there's only one other person at the Jedi Temple when the happening happened. But... You know, my boy R2, he's a nice guy, but holding holding a live hostage like that or keeping a baby in his chest cavity is not a known quantity. So mm. that's interesting. Far fetched. Well, I hope we find out. I hope we find I hope we get a prequel show that's like baby Yoda forty years ago when he's being trained by whoever it is. Even baby or cool. Yoda. <laughs> yes. Baby or Yoda. I can see it now. I can see that mug already. Yeah. Oh, he's twice as cute. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> the world has imploded. <laughs> You've created a statistical anomaly. Now, now gravity is flipped. How dare you? All right. Well, you ready to wrap this up? I'm about ready to wrap this up. This has been Learn the Burner. I'm Gary. And this is Neville. And we'll see you later. Bye. Wee, wee, wee.